people should be admired and thanked for doing this, then the opposite of that is, what are you hanging about for? We can't admire and thank you. Get out out there and, and do your duty. Right, then she goes on. For many old people, long before they become mortally ill, that prolonged dwindling is a worsening nightmare, a time of maltreatment in geriatric wards, lying on their bed sores in urine and excrement, of dependence and on diff dependence on indifferent foreign minders, because she's like foreign minders as well. Maybe they could go out in the snow. In expensive care homes, a period of painful confusion, feeling ignored unwanted and lonely in a less rich society because we're having to spend money to keep all these um, people who refuse to go out in the snow alive, such things will become more common. So the answer to that is, in order to avoid being maltreated in hospital, lying in urine and excrement and being dependent on all these other people, it's quite simple for Minette. Just die. Stop hanging about and die. And she says, I mean, it, it, it would be funny if it wasn't so terrifying. And what people have got to understand is that these are the sort of people uh, that you're opening the door to. This woman is clearly without an emotional bone in her body, clearly without any feelings to, towards anybody who she doesn't see as perfect. Oh, she'll probably rush back and say, you know, I've got several brothers who are disabled. But if you have me it doesn't show. She goes on, this is amazing actually. Um, given all this taboo against suicide or assisted suicide, uh, sorry, given all this, the taboo against suicide or assisted suicide seems incomprehensible. Religious people may think it wrong, although I've never quite understood why. It seems odd to me they're not eager to meet their maker as soon as possible, if heaven is so devoutly to be desired. I think we've gone into the realms of Monty Python now, have we? Do you know, it's strange because I can't think of any uh, of the books in the Bible, um, any stories Jesus told where he said, look, heaven's on a first come, first serve basis. You get there early, you're guaranteed a place. You know, like a, a, a concert or something. What is wrong with this woman? And she goes on to say, that she, she admires Nan Maitland, who ended her life in Switzerland recently because she didn't want to be old. Take note, people like me and the thousands of us who are becoming old. Nan Maitland had the courage to go before she lay in urine and excrement. She belonged to SOARS, the society for old age rational suicide. Well, I'm not a philosopher, but I think rational suicide is a little bit like, you know, fighting for peace or shagging for virginity. It can't be a rational decision because we don't know what it is. We don't know if you'll come back as a toad. I think she goes on to say you might not want to do it if you're a toad. Oh, Minette, I hope you come back as a toad. Sorry, but I really don't. It's not rational. It can never be rational. How can it be rational to say people are struggling in hospitals, this, that and the other is happening to them, the care they're getting is not good. So rationally we'll say, we'll just get rid of you all. That's going to solve the problem, isn't it? I mean, there are lots of people talking about safeguards at the moment in countries where the safeguards just aren't working. 
and of course it, the, she talks about the slippery slope and says the argument is purely emotional. Well, the slippery slope has moved on from people who are ill to people like Nan Maitland who didn't want to be old. And then we go back to um, that hospital that was offering, um, what was it called? Um, expression of wishes in healthcare. And they're giving you a list and saying to patients, do you want to be like this? Is the world going to be full of perfect people? Or are we going to have the useless mouths, as uh, Minette says, the Chinese used to call older people? There is a slippery slope. It's happening already. You're going into hospital, and if you're getting on a bit, apparently somebody's going to come up to you and basically say, look, can we get rid of you? And if you think I'm exaggerating, ask your hospital if they have anything like an expression of wishes in healthcare policy. Because it was meant to cover up, or not cover up, it was meant to clarify the mistakes that were going on with do not resuscitate. Um, Jane Campbell, Baroness Jane Campbell was quite ill. She had a do not resuscitate above her bed. and She didn't know it was there. And when her husband came back, he saw it over the bed. And when he questioned the people on the ward, they said, well, look, she's disabled, look at her. And her husband said, do you know who this is? And he had to go home and get stuff about her qualifications and all sorts. And Jane, being the good person she is, was worried about people who aren't Lady Jane. What about them? What about the families that believe what the doctor's saying is the right thing? It's a mess. It's a mess. And the mess is taking us down the slippery slope. And don't forget, it's slippery. It's all slippery. And there's money involved. You know, a lot of money involved. Um, anyway, she goes on to say, I feel great admiration for all those brave people who decide to end their lives at a time of choosing and who, for now, often face the seediness and loneliness of a Swiss clinic. Well, she's right about the seasoners and loneliness. But she said, we should treat people like this better without disapproval, but with more consideration, understanding, help, and above all, with more gratitude. We will need that if we are able to choose, if we are to be able to choose a good death in an impoverished society. I don't see any good deaths here. I see people terrified of going in hospital. What a bizarre world it's going to be. When, you, when you're being asked to predict, how would you cope with something that you've never thought of having? You know, you're going to have a, a queue at the doctors for those who don't want to be helped and those who do. It is slippery. But I'll tell you, Minette, from a distant voice. Be careful what you wish for, because it might be you one day being asked, do you want to carry on? Do you want people to look after you? It might just be you. And what about love? And what about care? Care for him whinging in the background. Just needs a bit of love. Are we going to get rid of that too? Well, I shall go and tend to him. So thanks for listening to The Distant Voice. Look out for other people. Adam, who was in a permanent vegetative, vegetative state for five months, given up for dead. Another lady who also was given up to dead, for dead and her mum took her home. And she had a child who now works for Distant Voices. And lots of other people who are going to have something to say. And next week, 
we'll be at the House of Lords talking about this and planning, Minette, what we're going to do. So, look out for the Eskimos. <laughs>